Hello, this is one of the how to pre recorded um, presentations um, as part of the how to workshop series. This is a brief introduction to freelance and self employment. Um, so it's really just a very quick overview. Um, just to introduce the idea of freelancing and contracting and to think about starting points for further research. I think the one thing that I would say at this point is Enterprise Central is your go-to department at UEA. So really all we're doing here is setting out some of the things you might want to think about before making an appointment or attending the fancy freelancing workshop um, that is run by Enterprise Central. So we're just going to very briefly look at the different kinds of self-employment, the qualities necessary to succeed as a freelancer, very basic legal requirements um, and where to access further support and information. So it's worth remembering how many people are freelancing and, and actually we've seen an increase in freelancing as a result of the pandemic and um, I think probably changes will come through more clearly in the next year or two in response to Brexit. The freelance economy is something that um, graduates are really interested in, but often aren't sure about their first steps. So really, as I say, this is just an opener to get you thinking about it, is it if it's something that you've considered. Oh, and by the way, my name is Adrienne and I'm one of the careers advisors. Um, we've got lots of sectors in the UK that work with freelancers. Media and the arts are very common, IT obviously, um, but there are opportunities for freelancers in pretty much every sector and there are very particular reasons why this is. We do know that COVID-19 has hit current freelancers hard, but we are beginning to see that recovery um, in place. And perhaps, as I say, that move to hybrid working, the big shift in the labour market may well be opening up new opportunities for freelancers in the years to come. If you've considered freelancing, I think the question is why? What is it that you're looking for? So take a moment to re reflect really about what motivates you to look into freelancing and self-employment and actually being a student um, as long as and I have to say this very clearly as long as you are not an international visa student because students on international visas may not freelance in the United Kingdom but if you are a UK home student then actually starting to do some freelancing as a side hustle whilst you're still at university and still studying is a really great way of getting a taste of what self-employment is like. Clearly, if you are an international student um, and you're thinking about self-employment in the United Kingdom post your studies, then you really, really must speak to Enterprise Central and talk to them about the Tier 5 visa because it's a very different process um, and I want to be absolutely clear about that at this stage. Um, so a lot of this presentation is really aimed at UK students. It doesn't mean that you're excluded, but it means that you need to work with Enterprise, Center, uh, Enterprise Central to get their specialist support and advice. But think about the freelancing side of things. Is it about flexibility? Is it about the future career that you're moving into? Um, an example um, is that 47% uh, of people working in the creative industries are working in some form of freelance capacity at, at some point in their career. So it may be that it's dependent on the sector you want to move into, just how relevant um, and prevalent um, freelancing is in that industry. But it could be about a side hustle. It could be about building um, additional income. Some quick definitions. So self-employed is the uh, umbrella definition, really. You are working for yourself. You're offering goods or services, but you're not necessarily contracting your work through other people. As a freelancer, you are self-employed, but again, you're not necessarily contracted to one employer for any particular length of time. So you may be working for one or more business at the same time. Um, so good examples of that are literary translators and copy editors who may be working on different publications for different publishing houses at the same time. 
Contractors are also self-employed, but they are working exclusively for one employer for a set period of time. So web designer, very good example of that. You're going to be working on one significant project with an employer. When you complete that project, you'll be moving on to a new contract, potentially with the same employer, often with somebody else. And then there is the portfolio career, as we call it. Um, and often that's not purely self-employment. So it may be that you are freelancing. For example, you're trying to set up as a copy editor, but you're working for an employer at the same time just to keep a regular in income in. So perhaps it's about how you use freelancing as a way of establishing your career in the early stages and you need employment um, to just kind of keep that stability as you do uh, work on the, the, you know, the more creative freelancing side of what you want to do. So common freelancing and contract roles, freelancing, film editor, runner, interpreter, personal trainer, translator, writer, that sort of thing more likely to be contract roles are database, IT roles, graphic design, um, consultancy roles, so going in and working with an organization on a very specific project. So that's a very rough sense of how those two break down. And it's also worth thinking about why employers want and use freelancers. Quite often it is this first bullet point that they need specific expertise that doesn't exist in the organization. So again, web design is a really good example. A smaller organization, perhaps it's a company that manufacturers bespoke, um, I don't know, um, just think of an example here, bespoke cosmetics. Um, they are more interested in developing their pro product and working on what they're trying to sell. They have a website. They need a website refresh. They might bring a consultant in or a freelancer in to rebuild that website for them because they don't do websites. They do cosmetics. Um, so it could be that it's a short project. It could be bringing expertise in that is very, very specific to a project. So, so it may be that it's a one-off role that they need fulfilling in order to move their business forward. So that might include somebody who is perhaps a bid writer. So their job is to apply for funding. So they bring a freelancer in to help them work on their funding application. So that's another example of expertise that might not be in the organisation and is a one-off. It may be that there's a big project and they recognise that actually it would be swifter, quicker, easier to bring in expertise as part of that project. Um, and that may, for example, be a project manager. So you may be working as a contracted project manager um, and you're brought in in order to deliver that one very specific project for the organisation. So that's the kind of business need. Um, the upside for employers is that they don't have to pay your national insurance. They don't have to pay your annual leave or your sick pay. They don't have to um, give you uh, any specific benefits. You are responsible for your own finances. You are responsible for your own pension. Um, so if you are freelancing, you are setting a rate which actually covers um, all of the things that the employer is normally contributing to an employer's uh, employee's salary. Because what you don't see when you get your gross uh, pay level and your net paycheck at the end of the month, when you're working for somebody, you don't see what everything else the employer is paying for in terms of the space in which you work, the support staff who keep your role going like IT and cleaning and estates and things like that. You don't necessarily see um, the add-on costs to the, the uh, employer themselves. So when you're freelancing, you have to take those add-on costs um, in mind in your hourly rate. They like remote workers because they're expected to be self-sufficient. Um, so you would need your own laptop if you were doing design work because they're not going to provide you with a laptop. 
Um, and it helps in uncertain markets. So if you are expanding into a new market, you don't know whether you're going to make it work. You don't know whether you can afford to take somebody on full time, then you might begin by taking a freelancer on. And for some sectors, it's absolutely traditional. It's where people tend to work. So again, translation is a really good example. There are very few in-house translators. These are, tend to be people who are working on a freelance self-employed basis. So think about what appeals to you in terms of freelancing. Um, whether it is the potential earnings that, you know, once you become more expert in your area um, and you are building your network of clients, actually, you know, there's the opportunity there to develop, uh, you know, a good income. <clears throat> Do you want the flexibility, the choice of what you work on? Do you want to be able to work autonomously? Do you want to work um, around other commitments or take time off between contracts? or build a portfolio. And I think increasingly as well, we're seeing people who are freelancing because of a lifestyle choice. Um, so, you know, an example, I know someone who is a freelance book designer who lives in a van in Cornwall. Um, and, and it's actually about the fact that they want to live in Cornwall and they want to live a particular type of life. And as long as they've got good Wi-Fi in their van, they can work freelance with a number of different clients um, looking out over to a, a field. So think about what it is that, you know, interests you about freelancing, what appeals to you. And the other thing to consider are the qualities of a freelancer. And there are a few here that we've jotted down. There may be others that come to mind when you're reflecting on what you think you can offer as a freelancer. <clears throat> but certainly you do need to be a good time manager. You need to be able to manage your own workload. You need to be able to communicate with people um, and present ideas, particularly if you're pitching for a contract or trying to build a relationship with a new employer. Creativity, uh, it may be less about artistic creativity and more about creative problem solving, but certainly somebody who can use their initiative and think creatively around issues. You're going to need to be resourceful and adaptable. And uh, with that time management comes the need to com manage compete dem competing demands. So if you have four or five contracts on the go, you need to be able to keep all of those things on track. So how do you manage your time effectively? To get work, you need to be proactive. You need to be prepared to go out and speak to people. You need to be able to put your work out there so that people can find it. And resilience. Resilience is important, particularly if you're working as a sole freelancer, um, you are on your own, it can be tough. So making sure that you've got support networks, people around you, perhaps you find that working in a shared rented space is a good way of working because you get some of that team environment, but at the same time, you're keeping your costs low. So just thinking about the kind of qualities that you're going to need obviously depending on the kind of freelancing you're thinking of going into. So as I said at the beginning, this is a really whistle-stop tour and where we really need you to go to get more support and more advice is Student Enterprise. And you can find about, out about Student Enterprise at the end of this presentation and also there's links in the information um, for this presentation. But just a few things to run through that might be helpful to get you started. Prospects.ac.uk has actually got a really good section on freelancing. So if you're still feeling like it's early days and you're trying to figure out whether it's the right thing for you, then this is a good guide just to have a read through. So we recommend this one to you. Whoops. Also, sector groups where they have a lot of freelancers um, have often got resources around freelancing. Here is an example. So this is the Screen Skills website. So this covers the games industry, television, radio, publishing, broadcasting. So a very, very wide range um, of creative industries. Um, and so it's a very common thing for people to be doing in the creative industries. Um, and consequently, Screen Skills have got their own section on um, 
on freelancing and advice and support there for you. COBRA is something that you need to access through Enterprise Central. So this is an example of a COBRA profile. Actually, this is a tiny example of what's in a COBRA profile because they're incredibly detailed profiles. But basically, it's a directory that gives you a breakdown of what you do as a freelancer in this particular area, how you go about um, accessing markets, what the going rate is, tips and advice in in terms of getting started, really, really comprehensive advice and kept actually really well up to date. So July 2019 is probably the most out of date and this presentation um, screenshot was pinched last year. So this has probably been updated since. So there's a big directory um, of different common freelance roles and you can access those, as I say, through Enterprise Central. So you'll find information about Enterprise Central on Career Hub um, and it tells you all about um, the workshops that they run, the help and the support that's available, the events that happen and also, as you can see, information about startup visas for students on international visas. So we really uh, suggest that you have a look at this part of the website and I've linked to it on the presentation um, and some of the resources and support available. All freelancers need to register with HMRC um, and, and actually let the government know that they're self-employed and you are going to have to pay tax. You're probably not going to pay tax in the first instance because you need to reach the tax threshold. Um, and obviously tax is very different when you're a student. But regardless of how much you're earning, regardless of how early on in your career you are, you need to keep accurate records of everything that you earn and everything that you spend. Lots of what you spend can be offset against tax. So even if you're not going to be in a position to pay tax at the early stages, just getting into the habit of keeping those records is really good. And there are loads of fantastic apps around now that actually help you not only keep track of expenditure, but that actually then link up with your tax return form so that you can do a really easy tax return at the end of the year. Use things like Cobra, but also the Enterprise Centre and look just looking around the market to find out what the going rates are for the work that you're offering. And also check whether you need insurance, personal and public liability. Depends on what you're doing. But again, Cobra is a really good place to advise you about insurance and whether that's going to be a requirement. If you're selling a project, then build a portfolio. If that product is your camera work, then build um, a, a showreel. If your product is writing, then give some examples of the kind of writing that you've done and give the range of skill that you've got available on your portfolio and get yourself out there. And you do need to build a network. And some people are a bit sort of uh, about networking. They don't like the idea. But think of networking as something that we do all the time. You are building relationships and we're always talking and sharing ideas and letting people have advice and tips. And did you know about this place? They're really good. Have you heard about this article? It's really good. All of those things actually constitute networking. When you're setting up as a freelancer, what you're trying to do is nurture that network. So you're using things like LinkedIn, and we would absolutely recommend that you get involved in LinkedIn if you're not already. And particularly as a student, because you now have access to LinkedIn Learning. And there are some amazing courses on LinkedIn Learning about freelancing and self-employment. So additional help is there. But it's also getting to grips with LinkedIn, a way of building your network and finding people who might be interested in taking you on. So there 
is support around networking through Career Central. We do run a workshop to help you get thinking about it. There's lots of resource on the Career Central website. Don't be afraid of it. Come along to events that we put on online or in person where you might meet with alumni or with employers and with career staff and have a chance to sort of practice those networking skills particularly after the last couple of years of lockdown, which means that we're still getting used to being in a room with people and actually speaking to people face to face. So think about how you can build your network. And again, that is something that will be talked about as part of your support through Enterprise Central. So Enterprise Central is the place to go. But also have a look at the HMRC page, have a look at the resources on Enterprise Central, which will give you other ideas. I've put the link in there to prospects and there's a couple of other links to uh, freelance organisations that are quite useful. Lots of help is out there. Funding is out there. Enterprise Central can actually give you funding to start up your business. So please make sure that you really tap into everything that they have got to help. And bear in mind, of course, as well, that we have all of these workshops um, that are either pre-records or live online. Come along and plug any <clears throat> gaps in your own skills and knowledge and more widely the things that we can help with at um, Career Central and the Career Service. Thank you for listening and good luck with your planning and your freelancing and self-employment ideas. Thanks a lot.